full about all then. <laughs> that one, we sailed across the Atlantic. Did people think you were just maniacs? We were clearly lunatics. Yeah. When it got really rough, you'd also have a load of water sloshing around in there as well. So Can't even imagine. It was pretty grim. At the moment, we're in the UK, pretty far away from our sailing boat, Tailey, who finds herself having a little bit of me time on the tiny Caribbean island of Aruba. We spent the first few days of the trip hugging fam and exploring Wales' finest woolen mills. Woolen Wales. <laughs> but with all that out of the way, we were itching to get back on the water. And as we were currently staying with our friends in Plymouth, we are in the perfect place to do just that. Today, we're actually heading somewhere very exciting. Now, when we were staying on Tailey last year at Mayflower Marina, across the River Tamar was a place called the Multi Hole Centre. And we really wanted to visit last year, but we were so flat out with boat jobs. So we decided now we're back, we're going to make it a priority to come and see what the Multi Hole Centre is all about. And more specifically, what Daz Cat catamarans are all about, because we aren't in the market to buy a cat by any means, but we are on a bit of a mission to do one of three things. We want to become more well rounded sailors and that means seeing a lot of different boats mainly completely different than Tailey obviously we know Tailey inside and out now but we want to be able to expand our experience into other boats yeah we also would love to show off more British made boats obviously Tailey is also a British made boat and we are from the UK so we thought it'd be really nice to demonstrate how cool uh, other British boats are really yeah. and lastly uh, what was the last one <laughs> Lastly, we'd love to have a look at how different boats have different places in the cruising world. So obviously Dazcat is a performance catamaran and participates in lots of races and things like that. But actually, we were fortunate enough the other night to be invited along to a Dazcat owners event. And we met a lot of Dazcat owners, but also a lot of other sailors. And one of them was a guy called Andrew who owns a Dazcat. And his goal is to sail it from here to South Africa and we are actually lucky enough to go sailing with him tomorrow on his boat which will be quite the experience we're really looking forward to it um, but today we are heading to the yard and it's gonna be really interesting to see how it goes from a design to a finished performance boat. finished boat when we arrived we were first blown away with the beauty of the West Country but also just how many interesting boats were here in the yard There were passion projects everywhere, and we were itching to get chatting to the people behind these very designs. I am uh, I'm Darren, commonly known as Daz. We built the Daz Cats. It's uh, the multi L Centre by Multi Marine. You can see one behind us. <laughs> <laughs> the, the latest, uh, the latest yeah. design. So we do basically uh, a few things here. So Daz Cat does all the design work, creates a sort of branded boat, which is all about performance and comfort, uh, a bit of racing and a bit of cruising majoring a little bit more on a bit more cruising recently but we still love our performance and we want that dna in our cruising boats so multi-marine does all the manufacturing of those boats here and then we have the multi l center which basically has eight oh, eight and a half acres of service area storage berthing and we do a lot of refit work and brokerage work and setting people up ready for their adventures we then met luca who is responsible for the design side here at the centre. The attention to detail and high regard for comfort, speed and safety whilst being an incredibly beautiful boat is really wicked to witness. We were just going over what, what do we like to use when we're offshore so it's like a nice up top galley where you can yeah. see everything in front of you, see where you're going. Not too open plan so you can not, kind of still wedge exactly. yourself in. You can yeah. wedge yourself in, you're not going to fall over if, yeah. if it's a bit bumpy. Um, and yeah, it's been trying to build yeah. build into the what we would envisage as the perfect offshore boat really. Yeah. To take the design stage a step further, they now work a lot with virtual reality. So let's put this on and see what the Dazcat Ocean Cruiser is really like. Really feel what the space is like. Oh. So this has been an amazing tool for us and being able to fully mock up designs. Yeah. Um, as they would be in, in, in the real space basically. Wait, so this is completely life size? This is full life size. Whoa, it's really high! Yeah, yeah. That's mental. Well, you just kind of like want to start walking. You, you can, well, so long. do it. You can yeah. actually walk um, as well. That's... You don't need to use the Walk normally, Becca. Just walk yeah, through it. Yeah, I know we're walking for a 
Oh, no, you're not. You're fine. There's nothing there. We'll shout. Just put your hand out in front of you. Yeah, that's mental. <laughs> Despite being in a virtual world of my own, we need to go back to the beginning of Dazcat to see just why the boats they make here are so special. It all started in 1988 when Daz built Dazcat 1, the boat you're looking at now, in a pig shed in Totnes with the help of his family. Now it sits at the multi hole Centre to give young boat builders the opportunity to step into Daz's same thought processes 34 years ago. It's pretty epic, really. That's almost um, pretty poetic, like the first boat being used to teach the, all the future boats. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Exactly, I like that. I like that concept. Yeah. And of course, you know, we 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 built this boat and we raced it around the Isle of Wight in 1991, and wow. we set the fourth fastest really? time, three hours fifty five minutes. What? Uh, yeah. Which was, yeah, I think between Needles and St Catharines, we averaged twenty four yeah. knots. Wow. Which was just insane. Average twenty four um, knots. It was just like vapor yeah, coming off the thing. But I was, uh, I was so, so skint at the yeah. time that I said, we've either got to win this race, you yeah. know, we've got to win, got to win. Yeah. And we actually had Graham Goff on the, on the helm yeah. and I was trimming and a guy called Graham Harris on the foredeck. Yeah. And uh, we were just absolutely smoking. I bet. It was, uh, wow. it was a fantastic experience. After D1, he went on to build Renegade, which was Daz Cat 2 in 1991 and then Clark's Active Air in 1994, which he sailed across the Atlantic. I had a school, a moulded school chair on the back rather really? than a nice cockpit because that kind of ruins the, all the accommodation that's in there. Yeah. And we just basically squeezed in there. But off the Isles of Scilly, we had like a Force 8 and we lost all electrics. We broke the Dolphin have... Striker that holds the front beam together. Um, Bob turned to me and said, oh, I suppose you want to go back. I said, well, let me think about it. Yeah. And we came up with the ways of fixing the boat and then we just carried on without any electrics. So we hand steered 12 hours oh, a day. What, all the way across all the Atlantic? All the way across the Atlantic. Oh my gosh. How long did it take you? It took us far too long. It yeah. took us 31 yeah. days. Really? We went up the northern route. Oh my yeah. God. And we were just kind of beating, but it went from gale to calm, gale to calm, yeah. gale to calm. Wow. And uh, bear in mind we had very little uh, in the sense of any communications or navigation. Did people think you were just maniacs? We were clearly lunatics yeah. and I don't think I would recommend it to yeah. anyone. When it got really rough you'd also have a load of water sloshing around in there as well. So Can't even imagine. It was pretty grim. Yeah. It sounds like a great fun at points. Yeah. Do you look back at like, it, is it a fond memory or is it, it like was a, a It was a fond thinking? memory. Yeah. Um, there were beautiful moments in yeah. time there with dolphins and pilot whales and phosphorescence and was it just, your first Atlantic just uh, no it was my third wow. um, and I'd sworn not to do it <laughs> yeah. having done the other two in bigger boats yeah. I'd sworn not to do it in a little boat like this but I kind of couldn't resist it at just 26 foot and weighing just over a ton she was truly the complete opposite of Taylor. and whilst we do love our mono We've never really sailed more than six knots in her, but that was all about to change as Peter and Luca were about to take her out from the slip and we were invited. website it mentions that Daz cats always make you smile. When we first read this we didn't quite know what to think. Sure boats make people happy but here on site you build boats so surely you have to say that. However getting off D1 we genuinely felt euphoric. Is it the swishiest boat they make? No. Has it had modifications, repairs and adjustments throughout its life? Absolutely. But just then it did what it was built to do and that's make people smile. Come on, let's get in. Secret entrance. 
the secret and you don't want anyone coming in here to oh, that's um, more. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> that's it now. Back a bit. She's um, getting put back together and going back to do what she used to do. So yeah. Dominic's giving it a new life again, which yeah. is the most sustainable approach. Yeah, yeah absolutely. By far. Yeah. She's um, a gorgeous she's out. Yeah, yeah. She, she already looks wicked. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've been right through yeah. the structure this of the boat. This is insane. There's absolutely no problems at all. Yeah. You know, a few little things to fix here and there, but nothing that's not fixable. Yeah. It's all lack of me, so no. there's nothing structural. By the time she goes in, it'd be like a new boat, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that happens. The one thing we were surprised at was despite them building nearly everything for the new boats on site, they are as passionate about repairing and restoring older boats as they are designing and producing newer boats. As Daz says... Obviously having a good boat that is well maintained and looked after yeah. um, and also giving uh, older boats a second life. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. Like you guys have done, it's, yeah. which I applaud. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so important. really important that we give these boats, yeah, you know, as long a life as they can get. Yeah, sure. In the end, boats are always going to be made, so you may as well prolong their life. Yeah, I and mean by making them well, yeah. not not disposable. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So this was Michael Butterfield's uh, third Dascat. Yeah. Um, Mike was the guy that started Mokra. Yeah and uh, one of the founding members yeah. and he was very eccentric yeah. and he was also Bob Marley's lawyer. Oh, this is that <laughs> Ah, this is the... Yeah. yeah. So this project is um, acting as a bit of a foundation to... This is D2? This is D2. Oh, cool. <laughs> so this is your passion project now? Yeah. And a few things have changed, you know, the original one had a big box here which ruined the cockpit. Yeah. And it had two. What, what box? What? Well, it had just storage and a heads in here. Yeah, heads here. Yeah, which is like wow. a thunder box, yeah. so you can sit in there and I go. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so all the bilges are different watertight compartments throughout the boat, yeah. and they all run through different pipes to a catch me just under where your foot is in the next compartment. Yeah. So then the bilge pump will run up and out, mm -hmm. automatic, and we'll also be able to close those. Yeah. So each of the compartments we can close and then check yeah, as we um, from the one spot rather than going into every compartment to try and have a little look. Yeah. yeah. I can just take a series of bungs out and see if uh, have fit with it. See if there's any moisture in there. Sustainability in the yacht industry is a really convoluted topic for many reasons, but knowing full well that there's no perfect means of disposing of a fiberglass boat really highlights the need to make high quality, long lasting boats. Additionally, with a manufacturer who is prepared to rehabilitate boats when needed. One of these boats is this 10 year old broad blue rapier 550. Oh, it's brand new. Yeah. So, yeah, that's no, a 10 year old boat. Wow. Bad. I, oh, and we haven't even started polishing it yet. Which is being refitted in time for a family to start the world arc later this year. Wow. I've it's never been in a boat like this yeah. before. Wow. I didn't know where to start. She's a performance catamaran built to sit comfortably at 15 knots with a really futuristic internal cockpit sail station, which disrupts the conventional idea of needing to be up on deck to sail the boat. The idea of this boat was all about sort of mile munching. It was about average speeds, global cruising, a really easy way of doing it. So we're inside steering, we actually get a terrific view from inside. Yeah. It's 70, 70 and you want to go cruise around the world and you finally sold your company and all that sort of stuff you know yeah. actually you don't want to be getting wet and leaning over on your ear I mean even, even 10 years on I still have never been on a boat which has got this kind of no optimization no so we've, we've built that same optimization to the new design the DOC it's, a, it's kind of insane to me that you could be here just like making food then if you do it <laughs> yeah 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 like and, that. and your eyes your eyes are yeah, yeah. you've got everything you're I mean, that, if right? you're here you've pretty much got a view on everything you need to yeah, yeah for sure yeah. total control we said that field of sight for us is so important. Having now a boat with a pilot house yeah. and having 360 view, we could never now go to a boat which doesn't have that. Where did the idea of the upside up come from? Was, it your, was it your guys' thing? No, the upside up from? comes from the racing stuff. So we yeah. take the components from yeah. racing and we put them on a cruising boat yeah. because the components for a racing boat are strong, durable, they last, whereas a lot of the other sort of, so we say, cheaper stuff yeah. doesn't. 
and we don't want you know we want our boats to be durable so of course that's the number one so even like the switches like they don't have wires yeah there's no wiring oh, okay they're all it's just done. done by the the inertia of hitting the button and it sets a little micro signal off and then it does the lights <laughs> wow yeah that's <laughs> insane not sure if she's our cup of tea but we love that traditional design is being challenged We saw Prismo sitting prettily on the mud just the other day. This place is wicked. Do this. And now Andrew was pulling up to the Vista pontoon and we were hopping on for the day. Yeah. However, first, he had to retrieve a halyard lock from the top of the mast, and I was a willing volunteer. That was one of the most nerve-wracking bits of rigging I've done. I'm giving a good clean as I go down with these trousers. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit high. Yeah, it's a bit higher than ours. Yeah, I was with all that sorted, it's time to give you a quick rundown of the Stazcat 1495. Built as a long distance cruising boat whilst combining the perfect balance between performance, stiffness and catamaran comfort, this model is an easy choice for someone wanting a modern yet easy to handle multi-hull. Weighing between 7 and 8 tonnes with a 75 metre squared mainsail, twin carbon dagger boards and blade or T-foil rudders, it's no wonder the 1495 has won numerous races. Anyway, let's head out the marina and see what she's made of. Yeah, we're good. Beautiful sail, it's like iridescent. Feeling <laughs> really, really excited to be on on board today, and um, we're just in the Plymouth Sound and oh, there's hacking now, but uh, Zach had to run up the mast earlier to retrieve a halyard lock, um, which was pretty spicy, wasn't it, Zach? Yeah, a little bit, it's pretty, 20, 20, 22, 20, 20, 24, something like 20 that. 20 meter mast, so, Big. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fun, fun time out today, feeling, yeah, incredible. That last year we were kind of taking our boat out for the first time and now we're on a performance catamaran. It's just, don't know how that happened, but blows my mind. <laughs> How is it? It's a completely different experience to Haley. You can't even really compare this. Yeah? 
yeah, it's just... How yeah. come? I don't know, it's, it's like every, the hot movement of the boat, the way it attacks, absolutely everything. What's the steering like? The steering's like, I can use my fingertips. Yeah, right it's light. And we're going, going like 10 knots right now. Yeah. I can use my fingertips. Yeah. It's crazy. Good. It's a completely different experience. She gave me a like five knots to like 11 knots in no time at all. The whole boat just lurched. <laughs> That's wicked. Look at that sail. That's beautiful. Well, it seems D1 wasn't unique in how a dowse cat can make you feel. This boat was seriously cool. Hearing the water flying under Prismo's hull makes you realise why people want to cross oceans on these boats. Before we left, I asked Daz this question. Where do you see Daz Cat going in the next kind of 10 years then? And without hesitation, he spoke about using their boats to teach a new generation of sailors to build boats for other sailors, just like they've been doing for the last 30 odd years in this little Cornish village. And that's simply what boat building should be all about. We just want to throw out a massive thank you to the team at Dazcat for welcoming us into their snug little community here this past week. We have thoroughly enjoyed ourselves, as probably demonstrated by the smiles permanently on our faces. Don't miss next week when we head to Dorset and start work with the guys at Kemp on the final piece of our Solent rig, Eek. Yeah? Yeah, I'm just helping, so yeah, yeah go for it. <laughs>